something sexy. That's L-I-Q-U-O-R. Don't get it twisted. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Kitty Liquor. That's L-I-Q-U-O-R. Don't get it twisted. I am Cat Wonders, your host. And this is episode 59. I kind of did things backwards, <laughs> but I pushed through and didn't screw up too bad. I've been eating some blueberries because they're part of this cocktail that I'm going to make for you very shortly. Um, but there's probably blueberries in my teeth. I didn't really think about that one. Yeah. Ah. The worst is when you eat almonds before you do anything. So I just air dried my hair. This is how my hair air dries. I have naturally straight hair, but it doesn't really dry straight ever. It kind of always has this like little thing going on. And I have 85,000 pounds of fake tan on right now. If it looks like I just came back from the Bahamas, <laughs> I did not. Um, welcome back. If you have been following me for a long time, thank you, and watching this podcast episode 59, almost 60 episodes. And I just keep coming up with more shit to talk about. So <laughs> I still, I'm like afraid to smile now because I'm going to be like blueberrying it up. Um, all right. So let's just get straight into the cocktail segment right away. Um, I'm going to do something with a pink lemonade, a bit of cranberry juice, so fresca. Okay. So this is going to be like a pink cranberry lemonade, but boozy, but not really not super boozy. I have a lot of shit that I have to do today. So I'm not going to like add the extra bit of either gin or vodka to this drink just because I don't want to be napping at like two o'clock. Here we go. Let's just get my glass going. I've got my handy dandy anthropology glass. I've got some diet cranberry juice. I think it's cran strawberry actually, so, but whatever, use whatever you want. Then I've got an ice cold nude pink lemonade. A little bit of ASMR there. These are actually really good. I did not think that they would be fizzy. So I enjoy nudes, neutrals, like all the vodka sodas. They're just kind of nice and refreshing and no sugar. But this guy, I'm really happy it's got some fizz to it because I think any lemonade or any iced tea that you get in a can typically is carbonated. So, or not carbonated, I'm sorry. I don't really like flat canned drinks. It's just me. And some people don't like carbonation. So um, just if you don't like carbonation, <laughs> keep that in mind with this. Um, but this is really tasty, even though it's sugar-free, it has the refreshing flavor of lemonade, but no sugar. So yahoo to that. Do diet. Um, <laughs> come on. <laughs> uh, diet alcoholic beverages like in a can exist, like a diet da Jack Daniels and Coke or something, because I don't think I've seen that. Anyway, um, okay, I've also got some blueberries. And where are these from? Kingsburg, California. Oh, California, providing us with all of our fruit, or a lot of it. And I've got a cold Fresca. So Fresca is like a nice additive to any cocktail, as long as the cocktail is on the sweet side, not like a Caesar or a Bloody Mary or something. <laughs> Duh. Anyway, um, I'm always like confused whether to add the carbonated drink first and then the non-carbonated or the other way around. But because this has some, maybe some, it's diet, so it might have artificial sugars in it, it might react with this fizziness. Do you ever get that where you pour something like carbonated in something that's flatter, but it's got a lot of sugar and it just goes and overflows? So I'm thinking that I'll do this first. And I wanna use as much of this as possible uh, to get the benefit of the booze, the most of the booze that I can get. <laughs> And pour down the side of the frickin' glass, would you? Not that I'm really making any difference. What did I just hear? Anyway, and let's do a bit of fresca. Fresca is also sugar-free for you guys that don't know what fresca is. If you don't know what fresca is, I don't know where you could possibly be from. All right and then some of this diet cranberry. Pfft. How did I not spill? Do you guys see that? So it's funny, this just 
randomly made me think of this, but I'm gonna add some blueberries as well. I like the big, fat, really firm ones that just like pop in your mouth. If you've ever ordered tea in a restaurant and they bring you the hot water in one of those little white ceramic tea kettles and the, the spout has like a rounded lip that doesn't pour. It never pours properly. It, it rolls down the edge of the spout down onto the table. And it's kind of like, haven't you guys figured this shit out yet? <laughs> the best is like are the stainless steel ones with the, the thin spout edge. Because the thing is, like the science behind pouring something properly is the thinner this is, the easier it's going to pour out and not roll down the side. This has got a little bit of a rounded edge, but whoever designed these stupid tea kettles should be not able to drink tea ever again. I was gonna say should be. Never mind. I'm not gonna say it. I don't want to get demonetized. I mean, who, who am I kidding? I get demonetized every single episode. <laughs> but anyway, okay. So I had some blueberries for garnish. Blueberries have that tight little shell. Maybe if I crush them, then they would. But all right, here we go to some cranberry pink lemonade. Cranberry pink strawberry blueberry lemonade. Ooh. That is lovely, and I try not to point out that I don't have a straw once again, but I don't have a straw, and um, it's it's okay. I'm doing okay without the straw. Mmm. It is very lovely. What do you guys think of my electric purple mesh top? I love it so much. I was gonna wear, like, a funky color bra, but I really appreciate just how this points out how purple my top really is. And I love it. And... I've got some cute dice earrings. I've got these in all colors, like all types of colors, because life is a gamble. Get it? <laughs> so dumb. Don't worry, the jokes I have today are better than the one I just made. And last episode, I got a couple of messages and um, emails from people like, you need to like zhuzh up your joke section or segment because I just kind of was desperate. So I was just reading off random jokes. They were all very kind of like dad jokes, very mild, which are not the kind of jokes that I like to tell. I like to tell kind of shocking jokes <laughs> or the, the punchline's disgusting or something. Um, but that's just me. So maybe some of you enjoyed it, but if you didn't, I apologize, neither did I. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, this past weekend, I went to my cousin's bridal shower and it was so lovely. I haven't been to many bridal showers, a few in my life, but was the sun was out. There were beautiful like storm clouds cut, like around threatening. We had a little sprinkle, but it was mostly in my cousin's best friend's backyard and it was a beautiful garden and it was just so, so nice. There were games, good, really good food. And then we went for a beautiful dinner and it was just so much fun. We went to um, a place called Central um, in Calgary and uh, it was great. It was really, really good. Uh, and then actually the night before I treated my cousins to dinner and my sister. Um, we went to Rodney's Oyster House. Are you surprised? <laughs> Rodney's is my favorite restaurant in Calgary. They have the most incredible like menu. And then also usually like quite a wide variety of oysters. And I think this past time they didn't have as many as they normally do, but it's the first time, let me see if I can find a photo, that I've ever had oysters this huge at Rodney's. Okay, so typically if you like oysters, I've picked oysters out of the ocean and thrown away the big daddies because I like the small ones. I don't want a big, fat, meaty, huge, briny oyster. I like them kind of dainty and I like meaty oysters. Don't get me wrong. Like I like them to have some like substance. Like, I, you know what I mean? Not like, not like the size of my pinky nail. Just like, okay. Um, but I'm second guessing myself pretty heavily here because did I take oh, that's the thing with snapchat you oh I got it oh my god I'm gonna show you right here let me just put a filter on it to brighten it up here give me one second um so I think my screen is probably dirty <laughs> does anybody else do this to clean their screen look at the oysters okay look look at those big daddies right there they're like triple at least triple the size of the other ones and they tasted 
so good, but it was like a you had to chew it at least nine times to get it down. <laughs> you know, with like an oyster, you take a shot and then you chew it and then swallow it. Um, but anyway, it was just a fun experience. And one of my cousins was like, I want to try one of those, but she's not really super into oysters, but she was forcing herself to eat one. And I was like, go for it. Um, so I ate about two dozen. I had, sorry, I'm just doing the math here like 31 oysters, which is a good amount. It's a good amount of oysters, especially when you consider how big those ones are because they're like count like three. So you could add another few on there if you want to, but oh my God, we had so much fun and so much food and um, it was just a blast. So did a little bit of shopping and um, just had a really fun time. So we stayed at the Hotel Arts downtown. I think there's two in Calgary. We There's one in Kensington and then one downtown. It's not like the, it's not a bougie hotel by any means. There are some things about it where it's a little bit like, oh, okay, yeah, they obviously have to do some like renovations. Our balcony, I'd like the corner of our balcony was collapsing. So I was like, don't go on the deck. <laughs> I've heard horror stories of balconies collapsing in other countries and people falling and plummeting to their deaths. Uh, so we didn't go on the balcony, but um, it's really neat because it's got like the central pool that the, the roof on it is movable. It's inflatable, in fact. So you can either have it open in the summertime, close in the wintertime, so it's open all year round. And just a really cool vibe, lots of tables and seating around the pool. So you can go kind of sit there and be entertained by people swimming and have drinks. And it's just like a nice vibe, uh, especially for like downtown Calgary. It feels more like a place that you'd go to in like California. But it was really great, had lots of fun, and that was my week end. <laughs> oh, also, uh, a few of my aunties were at the, the shower, and they're so funny. Like, I can't tell you just the jokes that they were cracking and just how they laugh. And I mean, I grew up with them, so I'm like, I know this, but it just, as I get older and like hang out with my aunties, like outside of Christmas or other things, um, it's, they're just so awesome. And I love them and yes, just had to point that out. <laughs> okay, so I just had to bring this up because I, I wrote it down in my notes not to forget because this is like crazy to me. And um, so a friend of mine just bought a number six trap. It's a grizzly bear trap. I don't know if they're still legal to use, if trappers still use them. Um, they're more heirlooms now, like they're more kind of antiques because they're not made anymore. Anyway, so he told me that it's, it's a trap that's huge. It's like this big and it's probably 100 pounds. <laughs> and um, he said, you know, it's crazy. And, and, and um, Alex, can you find maybe a photo of a number six grizzly trap? And it's got the claws, it's like, Shh. Anyway, these things, you open them up like this and you have to use like um, vice clamps to be able to open them because there is such a powerful like snap that you could never possibly like do it yourself. He says that there are still some of these traps set out in the bush, like in grizzly country, because hikers have found them. They have found these traps. And um, it's just like thinking about that. And if they've been there for many years, they're set and they're underneath a bunch of... <laughs> so I was thinking, oh my God, that's a crazy thought to think about the fact that there are still some of these traps set out there in the bush. So if you're on a hike somewhere, <laughs> your uh, walking stick should be used kind of like to tap the ground in front of you because I mean, I'm sure they, they would be rusted open damn near or lose some of the gusto like when closing, but oh my goodness, the thought of going on a hike <laughs> and um, getting yourself into a little s sticky situation there, uh, it just blew my mind. I was like, that's crazy to think about. So anyway, I just thought I would share that with you and let me know what you think or you if you have any stories to share in the comments down below. I feel really weird having like nothing done with my hair. Also, another topic, because I realized the other day that I'm very uncomfortable with people either seeing me falling asleep or being asleep. And this is not for any specific reason. Of course, if you're sitting up on the airplane sleeping, your mouth is hanging open. It's just really unflattering. I have like a, a special pillow that clips to, <laughs> clips together, which keeps my head upright. So sleeping on an airplane is not as bad for me, but like going over to somebody's house and you're extremely tired, 
you need to sleep or you need to rest, the last thing I will ever do is like fall asleep on their couch. And I think this is pretty normal. Like I think, I don't think anybody really wants to fall asleep like uh, on the couch at a party or something, but we had friends from Holland. This is like already last winter. And of course, some of them are jet lagged and they're doing like all sorts of stuff. And so at the end of the day, I'm making dinner for everyone. And then as I'm making dinner, two of them just lay down on my couches and just pass out. <laughs> and they're not drinking or anything like that. They were just exhausted. They just put their feet up and went to sleep. And I thought that it actually made me feel really good because I was like, they're so comfortable. They can smell the food cooking. They've had a long day. They know they don't have to worry about anything and that kind of thing. And um, it just made me feel really good, right? Because they were that comfortable. And these are businessmen. <laughs> they're not just like hippies, okay? So uh, anyway, um, they were uh, just totally relaxed and I get it. So. I myself am not offended when people fall asleep if, at my house or whatever. I, I you typically will be like, oh, they're sleeping, like respect that they're asleep and whatever. Um, but for me, myself doing it, that's a that's a no no. Like, and then I thought, what is that about? Like, why would I? Maybe because I I'm always kind of like consistently um, motivated and happy, and you know, I'm never. I never put my my shit on other people, you know? Like if I'm having a bad day, I'm never like, oh my God, I'm having such a bad day. Like, ugh. I will talk about my bad day, but I'm not gonna make it like an issue for other people. I feel similarly about falling asleep in somebody else's presence. <laughs> I just was thinking about it the other day. I'm like, why is that? Like some people can just, okay, I'm gonna have a little rest and then like sleep. But for me, it just makes me really uncomfortable. Like I just couldn't do it. Same with like, people seeing me cry. Do you know, do you have people in your life that ball crying like out loud when they watch a movie or something? Like they're totally okay with just crying about it out loud. But for me, I'm like trying to hide it. I'm holding it in. I'm trying to, one of the techniques I use that does work really well for me is to envision the camera crew behind the actors, the guy holding the boom mic, the guy holding the light, you know, and that they film the scene 20 times. That's what I have to say in my head. Like, it's not real. It's not real. It's not real. And then, you know, have to, and, and it does work, but sometimes if it's that time of the month, I'm just going to cry, but I'm not going to do it wailing. Like some people, I remember being in a theater and I think it was Titanic and it was like a chain reaction. So like the scene where the old people are laying in bed together, crying and scared because they're about to drown because the water is flooding their room down below in the ship. It's terribly sad. But of course, I've got tears like streaming down my face and I'm like, ah, and the music and all that. Somebody down in the front corner of the theater is going. <sighs> well, as soon as she started doing it, a lady over there started to be like. <sighs> so then everyone and it's loud in there, right? Like there's music, the whole ship action part is noisy. We're hearing these people over. And then it was like, it sounded like 15 people piped in to share in their grief with each other. <laughs> like, well, she's crying out loud, so I'm going to cry out loud. And it was kind of like a really strange thing. And it's the only time I've ever been in the theater where I've heard people cry. But then I've been watching movies with friends and stuff like that. And they just like are like, oh, like they're like, I can't watch it anymore. I'm just like, shut the fuck up. Like I'm crying too, but I'm strong enough to keep it in, okay? <laughs> just you try that too. <laughs> Because it's weird. It's an uncomfortable feeling to see someone cry, right? Because you want to console them or whatever. But there's nothing you can do. And it's just like, shut up. <laughs> I'm such a bad friend. Just shut up. <laughs> Crying in a movie. Let's dive into cat facts. Now, this is a segment where I find amazing facts that maybe you've never heard before. I've learned a lot. Actually, that's a lie because I don't really retain any information. <laughs> so if I read a joke, you think I could retell that joke immediately after I've heard it? No. Same with um, facts, but I do retain some that really stick out to me. This one in particular is um, really interesting. And remember, I'm finding these on the internet, so how accurate they are, 
I don't know. If you really want to know more or really find out the real truth, then do your own research. But the loudest animal in the world is a mere two centimeter long prawn. That's right. A prawn, the type that you eat. I mean, maybe you don't eat this type, but a prawn. The pistol shrimp is capable of snapping its claw shut so rapidly that it creates a bubble which collapses to produce a sonic blast louder than a Concord sonic boom. Excuse me, a shrimp? And this looks like a regular shrimp. I can't turn my laptop around to show you, but it just looks like a little shrimp with like a couple claws, maybe a bigger claw than the other one. It also says the shockwave can reach 230 decibels, also louder than the sound of a gunshot. The imploding bubble for split seconds also generates temperatures of 4,400 degrees Celsius, nearly as hot as the sun, killing its prey. What the frick? I just think that's really crazy. I had no idea and I'm shocked. And um, moving on. <laughs> Flamingos are not pink. They are born gray and their diet of brine shrimp and blue green algae contains a natural pink dye called canthaxanthin. Canthaxanthin. <laughs> that makes their feathers pink. Flamingos in zoos often lost their coloring until zookeepers supplemented their diets. Imagine that. Look at those flamingos over there. Those are flamingos. Those are, what are those? They're gray. <laughs> Otters hold hands while sleeping so they don't float away from each other. Wow, real interesting. Uh, hummingbirds are the only known birds that can also fly backwards. They often do this when retreating away from flowers. I thought that like, like hawks, I've seen hawks and stuff like, I, maybe they're not flying backwards or just kind of staying more in place when they're, when they're eyeing up some like rodent in farmer's field and stuff. So I feel like maybe that's more the wind. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> okay. Uh, this one's really interesting. Dolphins use toxic pufferfish to get high. Uh, dolphins deliberately handle pufferfish, causing them to relax, oh sorry, causing them to release toxins as a defense mechanism. These toxins can be deadly in high doses, but also have a narcotic effect and are powerful hallucinogenics, which dolphins appear to enjoy. A documentary witnessed them passing around pufferfish in a pod. <laughs> it's funny because they're puffer. <laughs> You're like puffing on, <laughs> anyway, um, before floating just underneath the water surface, apparently mesmerized by their own reflections afterwards. So they get, they find this, a poor little puffer fish. They probably kill the thing, passing it around, you know, like they must have it in their mouths or how are they? Because dolphins need air to breathe. So they're not, it's not like passing through their gills through the water or something. They must bite on it to get the, I don't know, man, unless they just drink some of the water. <laughs> I have no idea. Anyway, looks like there's a video on YouTube of dolphins purposely getting high on puffer fish. It doesn't surprise me. Dolphins are incredible creatures, man. Like they're smart. The world's deadliest animal is not a shark, a bear, or a tiger, but something far smaller, the mosquito. According to the World Health Organization, 725,000 people are killed each year from mosquito-borne diseases, such as malaria, dengue fever, and yellow fever. Ah, uh, there are more than 1.4 billion insects for each human on the planet, according to recent estimates. I don't know who's estimating this and how the hell they come up with these kind of figures. It's like, how many grains of sand are there on Earth? How many stars in the universe? How many bugs per person on the planet? Yeah, 10.4 billion. Crazy. The horned lizard is able to shoot blood from its own eye up to a distance of three feet away. Uh, the rather bizarre and disgusting act is defensive mechanism to confuse predators. Okay, is that what you wanna do is give the predator a taste of your blood? <laughs> is that a good tactic? I think it could be shocking to the predator and then they just get confused and walk away. But I feel like they'd be like, Mm, and the lizard's like, damn it. <laughs> Maybe, I mean, does that not make sense? Makes sense to me. Oh, okay. It says their blood contains a chemical that is noxious to predators. Okay, now it makes sense. And this isn't the only trick. Short horned lizards are also capable of inflating their bodies up to twice their size to scare anything away. Interesting. So these guys are really like, they must have been hammered on throughout history. Like they're like, okay hey guys, we need to come up with a better defense mechanism here. <laughs> I know, let's shoot blood out of our eyes. Okay, you try first. <laughs> How the hell do you even adapt to do that? Like, what the hell? Oh my God, this explains it. Roosters prevent themselves from going deaf due to their own loud crowing by tilting their head heads back uh, when they crow, which covers their ear canal completely, serving as a built-in earplug. So I used to have 
a bunch of roosters and then a bunch of chickens. And then of course you're not supposed to have bit like roosters together, but these guys were raised together like as chicks. So they were pretty good for a while until they started to crow one after the other, but each crow, each um, rooster had a totally different sound and they were different breeds. So that makes sense. But I would be able to tell who was crowing the most by the sound. It was the dominant rooster. And then when I was giving the, um, them away because pff, the bears kept eating my chickens and then it was too heartbreaking. So I just was like, I'm gonna give these away to somebody with like, you know, a safer spot. <laughs> so the first one to go was the rooster and the rooster that was crowing the most ha was like a Spanish rooster. And I say that not because of the breed, but because it would crow like this. <coughs> like it rolled its arm. <laughs> like so funny it sounded like it had a little Spanish accent or like a Spanish so there was that a uh, study showed that their crowing average is over 100 decibels which is roughly the same as running a chainsaw so yeah that would be that would be loud little is known about the elusive giant squid however the largest squid ever found measured over 50 feet and weighed nearly a ton to put that in perspective that's bigger than a bus that's crazy but I imagine they're really slow like a cre like a giant squid. Well, actually, no, sorry, I'm thinking of jellyfish, duh. Squid can be quick. Like you've seen them like octopi, octopus and like oct and squids. Octopi, that's plural, right? For octopus. <laughs> um, and then squids, is that plural? Um, they like are able to shoot back with their little tentacles and then, so they're actually quite quick. I don't know why, I was thinking jellyfish. Okay, I'll just read a couple more here. Koalas can sleep for up to 22 hours a day. I know some people that can do that too. Okay, koalas need more sleep than most animals because their diet of eucalyptus leaves contain toxins, are very low in nutrition and high in fibrous matter. So they take a large amount of energy to digest. Interesting, so they, okay, I thought they were just like sloths, like just more lazy, but it's because they're basically eating poison. But what the hell, like, when you think about evolution and like wh why, why eucalyptus, if it, I don't know, maybe just makes, I don't, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me, but that's interesting. Wow, what the frick? Okay, this is the last one. This is like crazy. Swifts, which I'm assuming are a type of bird, spend most of their lives flying in the air and can fly for almost an entire year without ever landing. A study showed that over a 10 month period, a swift stopped for just two hours. How the hell do they sleep? They're just up there like, what is a swift? Because what the hell? I can't find it because it's all like SWIFT. How does it work? Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunications. That's the acronym. Okay, it's a bird. I just found common SWIFT. Kind of looks like a kind of looks like a swallow. Ish, maybe bigger. I don't know. Um, that's crazy. How do they sleep? That is what I want to know. Um, they must just glide, like sleep and glide, or maybe they sleep sporadically throughout the day, like little moments. I don't know. That's crazy. All right, that concludes Cat Facts. Woo, that was interesting. Another thing, and this might not be of any interest to any of you, but it's fascinating to me and just a little bit more education. But fake tan has been a part of my life for pretty much since um, the end of high school when I realized that going to tanning beds and all that jazz is not good for you and um, I should probably come up with a different alternative and sometimes you want to tan immediately. You don't want to wait 10 times in the tanning booth to get a tan. So I started using fake tan like very sporadically in my late teens and then as an adult but I always had trouble with fake tan in my armpits because I always had little dry patches in my armpits that this the tan will cling to so tanner will cling to all your dry spots so that's why you really have to hydrate your elbows your knees your feet like just just everywhere that you don't want tan to stick your hands i did a bad job this time but i, that, I have a whole other story about that but anyway so i thought okay i know how bad deodorant is for you like with aluminum in it and i was using the worst shit like antiperspirant so i thought it's my deodorant that's causing my armpits to be this dry because I thought maybe I have an allergy to this aluminum. I, essentially, we probably all do, but I was like, I'm just gonna cut it out just to limit, see if that changes. I tried moisturizing under my underarms. I tried exfoliating. So I stopped using bad deodorant and switched to natural deodorant. It <sighs> took about like two months before my body readjusted to natural deodorant because I'm telling you, I had some horrible, horrible BO. 
<laughs> for that period of time until your body kind of gets used to because you wear none people that wear no deodorant typically are less smelly depending on how much sweating you're doing but anyway so and the dry patches never went away they just didn't go away I just thought, well, hell, I guess I'm just built this way. Maybe I just have like meant to have dry patches in my armpits. It's like a genetic trait of mine or something. So then randomly Dermalogica came out with um, a body wash and uh, I shouldn't say they came out with it, but they, they had it out. I f saw it at a store. The lady sold me on it. It's, I think it's eucalyptus eucalyptus mint or something. Smelled really refreshing, really good for the shower in the morning or whatever. So I switched using my old body washes, which was whatever smelled the best, like, you know, Dove or whatever else. I was using some like rose one for a while. And slowly but surely, my armpit patches started to disappear. And then I realized that it was not my deodorant or anything else for that matter. It was my body wash. So I was not buying any like natural body wash. It's just like in your head, you think I'm just rubbing it on my body, it's taking all the dirt and oils and everything and washing down the drain. But that's not all it was doing. It was affecting my skin to the point where I was having dry patches. So they went away and I realized, damn, I'm not using this shit anymore. And then I started thinking, I mean, I had acne from the time I was 11 and I still have like the odd breakout, hormonal breakouts. I think a lot of people do, it's not abnormal, but I had acne and it wasn't terrible acne. It wasn't like really, not enough to really be prescribed Accutane and that kind of thing. Like it was sort of definitely hormonal. But then I'm thinking how much worse was I making it by using these face products that you just get off the shelf, like Neutrogena, Aveeno, like these face washes, these astringents and things like that. I, Cause I just didn't know that your body wash or what you're washing yourself with will affect you like that. I can see moisturizers, something you're putting on your body that's staying there for a long time. So I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, since then, I've purchased the whole Dermalogical line. <laughs> no, that's not true. They have a ton of products, but I use their body wash, their body lotion, which smells like the loveliest oranges. It's like an orange smell with a bit of vanilla or something in there. It's so good. Their body oil. Oh my God. I use a combination of the lotion and the oil on my chest and stuff after the shower because the shower beats down here and we have hard water. So my chest gets dry. So anyway, the oil combined with the moisturizer is just to die for. It smells so good. I don't even put perfume on. And then um, of course all the face products. So all my cleanser, my moisturizers, my, um, you know, it's SPF, it's all dermatological because I'm kind of like terrified now to use anything besides that. When I was in Holland, we were staying at the W Hotel and they have Daveness and da people call it like Davines or whatever, but Daveness branded, like that was the complimentary soap used shampoo, conditioner, body lotion, um, body wash in the hotel. And I was like, oh my God, I paid an arm and a leg for this stuff back home. So here, Davines shampoo and conditioner, it comes from, made in Italy or whatever. It's probably not made there anymore, but like $40 a bottle for like shampoo and conditioner. So I was like, woohoo, like Davines, like this is great. And I kept asking the freaking maid to leave me more shampoos and conditioners. <laughs> and uh, shampoo and conditioner was great, but I was using the body wash. And lo and behold, a few days later, the dry patches started to return. So there's something, and, and Davines is a good brand. So if you think you're getting away scot-free because you're paying more money for your product, not necessarily true. So just note that if you do have any strange dry patches or whatever on your body that's chronic, you don't know how to get rid of it, even eczema and things like that. Um, and those I think with eczema are aware of like certain products they can and can't use. So if you're one of those people, just ignore me, but it could be your body wash. So just, consider that a very safe option. I know this from personal experience and this is not sponsored by Dermalogica, but was, oh my God, that would be the best day of my life. But um, Dermalogica is is quite expensive, You ha but the payoff is that you need very little of their product. You don't have to have a whole thing like this. If you're washing your body, you don't have a couple pumps and that's all you need. It's a safe option for you. So just so you know, and if you have a, a family member, <laughs> you know, your son, your daughter, your mom, your dad, your aunt, uncle, whatever, your friend has a similar problem, just suggest that to them. So that's that. <laughs> okay. Also, I heard as I was listening to another podcast, I think it was actually a BuzzFeed, something on BuzzFeed, that when Walt Disney died, they froze his body cryogenically and he's below one of the rides at Disneyland right now, frozen under 
the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Now, there was this rumor going around, I think like probably shortly after he died. His family denies it completely, but there's like some weird evidence that this is actually true. And um, you know, like how else do you live on forever? But I don't think cryogenically necessarily. He's probably just like his body is frozen underneath the ground somewhere. Do I believe it? Not really, <laughs> but I just thought, do you guys know anything about this? I really haven't gone like into depths with trying to find out if this is true or where the rumor came from, but I just had to bring it up. I heard it and I wrote it down. I'm like, I've, that, that is the creepiest thing to think. Like, it's not creepy. Like you bury people in the ground, they decompose and then that's that. But to kind of stay frozen, what would, okay, if you had a body in a freezer, <laughs> <laughs> to you murderers out there, I have a question for you. Um, no, that's terrible. Don't murder people. Uh, <laughs> you know, if you if if there's a body frozen, so say it, it's kept at a like what is a typical freezer like minus five or something, minus four, minus five. I'm talking about like a refrigerator or deep freeze. Okay, so say minus minus ten. You're frozen for thirty years. What will your body look like? Would it still look the same or would it slowly like start to dry out the ice? Like would the ice start, you know, what would happen to you? What would you look like? I'm curious. I've never had that thought until just now. <laughs> and I'm wondering like, would you remain frozen in time? Because how can decomposition happen? You're not really going to dry out. I mean, you probably would. Actually, that's true. Because I've, I've had some like packages come out of the freezer that have been in there for a long time, like sausages or something. And they come out like hard little dried... <laughs> the moisture seemed to have been like sucked out of them. Freezer burn. So yeah, I don't know. Really kind of gross to think about, but if you have the answer for me, please leave it in the comments down below. Now it is time for a segment that I like to call groovy music. <laughs> Isn't that so clever? But music is spelled M-E-W-S-I-C. Mew. So I just downloaded the song today from Epidemic Sound. It is copyright free. Okay. This is called A Million Signs by Vividry. <laughs> Yeah. 
A Million Signs by Vividry. Pretty chill tune. Definitely a groovy tune. I like that one. Kind of like a driving tune. All right, that concludes groovy tunes. And now we are going to move on to cat kitty twisters. I almost said cat backs again. Um, I found a new website <laughs> with some better jokes. Some of these are sick. Some of them I'm gonna have to run over because they're a little bit off color. Like they're not the most smartest. <laughs> jokes to read on the internet um but the website is uh joko jokes j-o-k-o -O jokes and uh some of them are pretty funny a doctor says to his patient i have bad news and i have worse news what's the bad news asks the patient <clears throat> you only have 24 hours to live replies the doctor oh my that's terrible what could possibly be worse than that well i've been trying to contact you since yesterday <laughs> I so botched that, but that, you, you got it, right? <laughs> Late afternoon, Grandma saw the teacher walking up the driveway. She asked her grandson, Did you leave school early today? He hung his head and admitted, Yes, Grandma. The grandma thought it was hilarious and assumed him saying, Oh, and assured him saying she would uh, tell the teacher that she did, hadn't seen him all day. Maybe you should go hide, she suggested. Oh no, Grandma, you should go hide. Not me. Surprised, she asked why. The grandson said, I told the teacher you died. <laughs> okay, this one I had to read five times before I got it. I'm going to read it once, and then you have to tell me if you got it or not. Three guys are on a boat with four cigarettes, but they don't have any matches or lighters. What do they do? They throw one cigarette overboard, and the entire boat becomes a cigarette lighter. <laughs> <laughs> when you're reading it, it's like, what the hell? But the whole boat becomes a cigarette lighter because there's one less cigarette. Get it? So bad, but so funny, actually. Have you ever heard of a chicken plant? I guess that the eggplant came first. Uh, I'd throw that in. It's really not funny, but there you go. There are three kinds of sex. There's horm <laughs> hormone. <laughs> Homosexual sex for people who have sex at home. Bisexual for people who buy sex. And there's trisexual. That's me. I'll try anything. <laughs> that could be a little off color, but hey. <laughs> How do you wake up Lady Gaga? Poke her face. <laughs> How did the blonde break her leg raking leaves? She fell out of the tree. I've never tried to rake leaves on a tree. Okay, just in case you were wondering. Wow, I should have probably read on because I'm trying to find more funny ones, but there aren't any. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, geez, was that you that fell 20 feet out of the tree? I don't know. I wasn't counting. <laughs> I like my women like I like my tea. Pale and weak. <laughs> That's sick. This is actually funny. Okay, so Dave and Steve are out back uh, at a party smoking and talking. Dave turns to Steve and starts telling him what he thought was a hilarious joke. After he's finished, Dave is confused and Steve isn't laughing at all. Uh, then he remembers it's an inside joke. But you could actually tell this joke to a group of people outside and then walk inside. You could say, hey guys, I have to tell you this hilarious joke. And they'll be like, okay. You're like, oh, never mind. It's an inside joke. And then you go walk inside. <laughs> or is that just something I would do? <laughs> uh, well, everyone, that concludes Kitty Twisters. Uh, again, a bit of a downer. <laughs> I need to buy like a joke book because every time I type in hilarious jokes on the internet, it pops up like Amazon books or like th a thousand of the funniest jokes in the world or something. Or I should just writing, start writing my own jokes. I watch a lot of um, podcasters that are comedians and it's essentially like, like they're doing stand-up, right? One in particular is Theo Vaughn. His podcast is called This Past Weekend. And he, he has guests sometimes, but mostly it's him just with himself, kind of what I do. And, um, just cracking the most hilarious things that you've ever heard. And some of it, I'm sure, is improv. Like, it's not all script. It's so... And he is so funny. He's got, like, a strong southern accent. And uh, he's just such a funny guy. But he just writes his own shit. Like, he comes up with the stuff out of the top of his head. That's maybe what I should try. Maybe I should try doing some stand-up. <laughs> uh, you guys are like, no, please, God. Okay, fine. I won't. But anyway, that concludes this episode of Kitty Liquor. I, I wanted to say Kitty Twister so bad that I did not know what I was about to say. <laughs> What's the name of my podcast again? <sighs> that concludes Kitty Liquor episode 59. I hope that you loved it. Thank you for 
spending this time with me if you made it to the end. I would appreciate, really, really appreciate a nice thumbs up from you. Um, it really helps on my channel. And a subscription, subscribe if you're not already. And um, just thank you. I've been having lots of fun and I'm gonna continue. I am building a new studio, uh, which will have a second spot on my podcast for some guests. So that is something that's in the works and I'm super excited about it. So, 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 how many times do I say so? <laughs> um, if you have any questions, suggestions, I mean, jokes, please. Uh, email them to me at kittylickerpodcast at gmail.com. Um, down in the description box, you'll see a link tree link that will have all the links to my OnlyFans, my Patreon, my Instagram, Snapchat, blah, 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 blah. All that stuff down in the description box in the link tree link. And uh, leave a comment if you have, like I said, any suggestions. You don't have to email me. You can leave it in the comments down below. I do read the comments. And yeah. It's Friday. I hope you're going to have an amazing weekend. It's summer solstice when I'm filming this and tonight I'm having a party. So that's going to be fun. I really hope that you guys have, like I said, an amazing weekend and an amazing rest of your week. And I'll see you all in my next video or in my next podcast if you're listening to this. Bye!